Welcome, everybody, to uh, episode 94 of the Some Ordinary Podcast. We have... Is it really 94? I don't know. I made that up. We, uh, okay. we have a lot of cool hosts today. Three hosts and then one co-host. Mar- uh, Art, dude. <laughs> Give it Mark. Yeah. Martin Luther King on that Martin one. Martin Luther King. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, well, you shit on Sniper Wolf a lot, but she knows how to make an intro. Yeah, dude, Sniper Wolf gets you in that first 10 second retention, dude. Yeah, I've been researching just, her for a bit. I've never seen one of her she, videos. She shows up there, she gives you the, Hey guys, hey friends, how's everybody doing? Now we're gonna react to TikToks that make me dumber. And then she just... Dude, speaking of yeah. reactions, have you guys seen Lamina? His, his response I to all the reaction that. shit? yeah. He called out excuse. Well, indirectly called him out. Remember how XQC was like, I get, I, I message all these guys before I react to their video. Let me know. Was like, not once did any streamer send a fucking message over to me. And then he straight up says, if you just put your shit into the corner of the video and watch the whole thing, that's not but, cool. But like, what's exceptionally wild about XQC is that the man literally says nothing. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, hey, nobody was expecting much out of it, too, you know? Like, in, at least the golden tier of Reactor, at least it's still Sniper jokes, Wolf. At least make jokes, you know? At least crack some funnies or... Or just crack. steal them like Sniper Wolf does, dude. Or That's that. my favorite part about her. She steals jokes? So those, yeah, have you been... Well, you've never seen a single video. I haven't ever watched any videos seen a single video. So she watches... You made a whole... You made, like, two videos on her. What never the fuck? seen it. Dude, two, two. Try ten. <laughs> wait, 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 are you are you fucking with me? You've seen, you've researched uh-uh. her. What did you pay some poor soul to research you. for? Yeah. No, I, said, no, Total, no. I just read a script. Caleb's a fan. And every time Caleb starts a video about Sniper Wolf, he's I like, hey, that. I do what yeah, she does. Sniper Wolf. He's Sniper Wolf, proud with her, yeah. beautiful woman. Anyway, mm. she steals shit. That's how he She's starts so all of his videos. She's so beautiful, dude. Thank you, Caleb. Really? Hey. Are you going to give us a fucking, like, Amber Heard, like, facial, like, <laughs> signs on it too. She's so beautiful. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's always one of my. There, there's been there's been a weird shit about the. There's there's been weird stuff this week, dude. Like and Yandere Dev's response has been funny as fuck. Yeah. He's like the most un like I don't know if you guys have been following that dude, but I it's have, like the yeah. least surprising grooming, well alleged grooming story that I've ever heard, dude. It's like one look at this guy, it's like come on now, that shouldn't be shocking anybody. It's like as far as anybody. like YouTubers that end up grooming their fans go, he would have probably if I like had to guess, he would have probably. If you had been to put money on it, you'd do I it. I hate to be that guy, but. Yeah. Yeah. He was a. He was a. He was a. He was a weird, weird dude. But now I'm like looking into one guy that's like just the the best kick streamer. I know Caleb knows this guy. I think I, I think all of us know him. Johnny Somali, just oh. a Japanese top kick streamer IRL dude, bro. He got like a. He he's facing like how much like up to five years in Japan right now for fucking around with their country. Nice. Dude, that's huge. That's awesome. I think they're gonna make an example out of him just because IRL streaming is so degenerate these days. Did um, you see how the prank YouTuber that got shot, uh, the guy that shot him, like who did it? Like, it was unjustified. He got off scot free. Okay, that guy. So the so the dude that shot him, the Uber or DoorDash delivery driver. I'm gonna say it right now, that's an unexcessive. That that's a that's an excessive. Sorry, use of weapons. Right? Like you should not be bringing a gun out to shoot a guy that annoys you. You know what I mean? But like, what the f- did you expect in Virginia? Right? Like you're fucking around with a gun. Everyone is strapped in Virginia. Like this should just be like common sense. You know? Yeah, come on, bro. Caleb, what, what's like Caleb? What's you, your take you really on the gun usage? You pulled out the Saul Goodman logic there. In his defense, Your Honor. Um, he knew what he was getting into. The, the the guy who got shot recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, what was my the take on it? or whatever the hell it is? Yeah. What do you think about the gun usage? Like did everyone's been it? like, did he deserve it? I think he did. Um, I th- well, I think he deserved to get something happen. I don't think if the gunshot was you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I I say um I say in a vacuum, um, most people who get shot and are not victims deserve it. Okay, so do you, do you, okay, so this guy. <laughs> to be honest, do you, you you've seen the clip, right? Like he he whips it oh, out yeah. in like half a second, like yeah. half a second. I, the guy I wouldn't gets have shot. done it as he's walking away. I wouldn't have done yeah. it to be honest. But uh, I also, you know, seeing it, slow clap. 
<laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, to be honest, like I do too. Like I think it's, I think it's, is it okay to shoot a guy for committing a prank? No, but like I said, it's a Virginia. It's like if I started doing this shit in the state of Texas, I would get shot, right? Like, how many people are armed in Texas, like without even telling anybody? I would wager ninety nine percent of them. So Most, you're kind of most, asking for it. That's why most of the pranksters fake their pranks, uh, exactly. So they don't have to risk this. Well, that's what I appreciate about Tanner, dude. He did not fake his prank. Like he. And he was willing to get shot for this prank. It was some... Unless it was the most elaborately fake prank of all time. <laughs> How do you fake a gunshot? <laughs> <laughs> like that's... He's he just had the guy fast. kill him to prove his integrity. Dude, I, I'm just, I'm just going to say it. Like, it's obviously it's unjustified that he would whip out his gun in like half a second and like John Wick this dude in the chest. But... Come on now, like, what were you expecting? Like, what did this guy expect to happen, you know? It's like, he's, what was the joke even in that video? He was bringing the phone up to the guy's ear, and I don't know what was going on, but, like, he was bringing the phone, and, like, just calling him, like, a, like, I don't know, he was just, like, aggravating this guy, like, purposely. There was no joke to it, from what I heard. It wasn't that funny, I thought. No. But well, here's, here's the thing. You could, at one, on one side, not feel bad for the guy that got shot, but at the same time, realize that the person's probably so unhinged if he's willing to shoot someone over some stupid prank for YouTube that mm-hmm. uh, they probably shouldn't be walking around with a gun. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a strange... Uh, it's definitely a strange... The dude obviously felt quite harassed. I wouldn't have done the exact same thing. I mean, obviously, it didn't seem like he was in danger. Um, but at the same time, you know, oh well and find out i guess i mean i just think i, I just like to go with option c in this situation i just think it's all funny like i just think it's overall a hilarious situation and he didn't like, die, I'm not so it's like yeah it. that's awesome yeah and, and you know what makes it funnier is like even if he has been shot like he's still like laughing it off saying he's gonna come back and prank more people so it's like he didn't learn anything like he's just gonna keep doing it so. here, here's another crazy thing boogie 2988 got a bigger punishment for or the warning shot than this guy got for actually shooting the person wait what <laughs> yeah boogie actually had like a sentence of some sort he didn't have to serve jail time but i guess he was on i forget what the name of it was but something akin to like a probationary period i don't know if he <clears> shot <throat> like i don't know if this is true or not but he shot near the 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 in school zone thing right well, yeah, well that's what it is. so boogie lives i mean most people that are in a suburban area live mm-hmm. somewhat close to a school uh so people said that he lived close to a school in a church who knows i don't know what angle he shot the gun but that was just a way for people to start saying that boogie shot up a school uh <laughs> as the <laughs> phrasing for the event uh but uh yeah it, it's crazy that uh if boogie actually shot the person he may have had a better case for for self-defense and have gone gone away with it whereas with the warning shot well lesson learned next time shoot the guy yeah next time like you know if you're gonna if somebody if you're gonna enact castle doctrine in your house it's like just shoot the dude in the chest like don't just shoot out in the middle of nowhere you might have gotten off scot-free then <laughs> or with like severely lesser charges it's I don't know, man. Like, guns are so weird to me. Like, I love firearms, but I feel like most people that have them are just, like, in brain-dead stupid, you know? Or, like, like like Caleb said, the guy and, like, the like the guy, he... I don't know if he felt that, like, this prankster was a threat, but, dude, within half a second, like, he whips the gun out, like, stealthily, by the way. Yeah, if you watch even, the like, video, he's just like this. Like, it's not like he's afraid for his life running away thinking he's going to die if he doesn't do that. He just casually did it of, like... This is a, almost like this is a weirdo, and then just pulled it out so nonchalantly. Um, yeah, like he was just ready to go. Like I had to watch that video a couple times. I'm like, where the f- was a gun? Like, and then it was, it was almost it was almost like it was almost like it was just in his pocket, ready to like fire. I'm like, this guy's. F- it, it was definitely the most. <laughs> neuro, it it was definitely the most neurodivergent shooting I've ever seen in my life. For sure. God damn you! Don't do that while I'm drinking, you son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that was a that that was a YouTube prankster that like honestly, and, and I'm gonna say that he doesn't deserve to get shot. Like, yeah, just because you're annoying, you probably don't. But I'm still gonna laugh at it because, to be honest, he's he's okay with it. He, he's gonna come back to pranking on TikTok again, dude. They don't give a. F- it's a beautiful platform when it comes to that stupidity. But I will I will give him respect there. He is without a doubt one of the most realistic. Like she, maybe you should get on kick. Like to be honest with you, maybe you should just like IRL stream on kick. You could get like a multi million dollar deal, dude. They've lost might, Johnny Somali. <laughs> kick might honestly <laughs> offer him a contract after that. Dude, it's they've lost Johnny Somali. He's in 
in jail right now. They gotta fucking switch up another. They gotta bring another neurodivergent into the party too. So. I mean, what YouTuber hasn't been to jail though? Have you been to jail? I think no. all of us. Hello guys and gals, it's me Mudahar, and spooky season is here. So I made myself a little classic horror movie playlist on Netflix. Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Hereditary, Rick and Morty. So, if you try this yourself, you might notice you will not find them all on Netflix. How did I do it? <laughs> I just used the greatest app in the history of apps, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN lets me change my online location and trick Netflix into showing me movies and TV, completely mostly legally, that aren't normally available here in in the US. Like for example, last week I watched the original Scream movie on Netflix. It was easy. You open ExpressVPN on the TV, you switch locations to Canada, you hit refresh on Netflix, booyah! And it's not just scary movies. ExpressVPN's got nearly a hundred countries to choose from. I've done a lot of exploring on Netflix and I've found the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy on Australian Netflix. I found Top Gun on German Netflix, Parasite on Korean Netflix, etc, etc. ExpressVPN works on everything. Phones, laptops, Laptops, tablets, TVs, and it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with pretty much all streaming services. Disney+, Plus, BBC, iPlayer, Shudder, you name it. So get your money's worth and get three extra months of ExpressVPN for free when you go to expressvpn.com slash SOP. That is E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash SOP. That's been me, Mudahar, and back to the podcast. Yeah, we, we, us, we have yet... Us cringe we've... YouTubers. We've never touched a prison cell yet yeah. in our life, yeah. okay, for whatever reason. But, yeah, it's, uh, dude, I'm, I'm gonna be real, man, like, in Kick as a platform, the IRL streaming stuff is so insane. Like, have you guys seen what's been happening to Only Use Me Blade? Oh, yeah, about how he, like, the guy died while they were live streaming it, painting stuff on his face and holding his nose. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god, what? <laughs> okay, so, okay, so, for anybody that doesn't know, going Only on Use Me here? Blade. How is this okay, only... streamer culture today? <laughs> Okay, IRL streaming is f***ed, okay? IRL streaming is beyond ruined, okay? Dude. It's went beyond Ice Poseidon and, like, you know, hiring a bunch of crackheads to live in an L.A. mansion. Now we're straight up recording people, <clears throat> getting, like, we're f***ing with people as they're dying. So only use me Blade, for those of you who don't know, oldest Call of Duty YouTuber that you probably ever heard mm -hmm. of, okay? Like, this guy was on the platform stabbing people with a knife on Call of Duty since day one. So recently well not recently he fell off a while ago and he switched to this real life streaming this irl streaming this ice poseidon ip2 streaming crowd and he does irl streams so he recently was doing this fish tank clone on youtube where like he uploaded like six different streams to youtube of like six different parts of this airbnb so they had this one guy I forget his name. I think it was like Willie or some shit. Exactly. I don't exactly remember the name, but it was somebody related to his like girlfriend or wife. I think and... his ex-girlfriend was now dating him or something along okay. those lines. So there was a clip of this guy just like standing in the kitchen, right? And they give him a drink. Now the drink is alleged to be lace. It's like alcohol with fentanyl mixed into it. Okay. So oh, it's a very, very dangerous concoction for anybody that doesn't know what fentanyl is it's probably the most Not insane good. synthetic opioid just a little bit extra of a dose will probably land you in like d deadly like like you'll be dying so anyways they gave this guy like this laced alcohol and he drinks it on camera and he starts to like pass out and then he falls basically to the ground head first right like he just knocks out he's on the ground and so they're just drawing on him like they're just with him, you know, like, oh, oh my, my buddy's God. passed out. Let me just draw faces all over him, with him he, a little bit. You forgot about one point. He was passed out while standing up. He was just like this, and then they were oh, messing yeah, with him because he was like yeah. he was he was like holding himself up a little bit. But when he when he was passed out, the way that we found out that he died was later on on like uh, the four chains and the kiwi farms and all these places. They would just post like photos outside their Airbnb. Of like a of like a uh, ambulance with like a stretcher and like that guy being stretched into it, like oh it was God. fucked. Like the guy is dead. Like he's gone. So for the last couple days, Blade has been like kind of doing a half eulogy, half like besmirching this guy after he's dead and everything. But it's like this is like one of the one of the first like IRL live stream on camera deaths that we've seen. And this was broadcast on like YouTube Kick. I think it was YouTube. It was on Kick. Kick actually banned Blade. Like, Kick was one of only... Like, Kick actually That's banned the account. <laughs> that, is, that is saying something. Like, when <laughs> Kick actually goes in and issues a ban on a 
fucking creator, you know they f*** up. That's and wild. I asked Keem, I asked Keem about the band too, and I shit you not, his response to me was like, they banned him because of his use of the N word or something. What? Not, f- not because they he killed somebody. <laughs> Not because somebody died on oh stream or there was all the other degenerates. He was the N-word, like... <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> like, like, it was, it was a... So, and I gotta, I gotta, like, keep researching the situation because it's so fluid. Like, this is, like, it just happened, sort of. Not just happened. Like, a month ago it happened, but it's been, like, kind of disseminating. Like, it's, it's so unknown in the IRL streaming world because everyone was, like enamored by Johnny Somali and all these guys, you know? Rightfully so. Those guys are really, really degenerate. But, like, there was literally a f***ing snuff that happened on the on the IRL streaming front, and, like, f***ing, you know, and it comes from Blade, of all people, too. So it's just like, god damn. But yeah, oh that, that's god. what was happening on the IRL front, dude. It was a f***ed up, was f***ed up situation. <laughs> After the fact, I saw some clip where Blade essentially was saying, you know, maybe I should stop doing drugs. <laughs> that's funny as <laughs> He said that he said that like nine times so far. It's like, maybe oh I should give up well, on alcohol. <laughs> but, well, he's like 40 now, right? No one thought he was going to live this long. Because uh, I mean, he's like a diabetic, right? Because okay. he's drank so much? Yeah, he's a diabetic. He's got he lost like, okay. a toe, did he? Or mm-hmm. was he going to? I think he's going to. Well, the thing yeah. is, it's it's like... I think the Jaeger, like, this is what I, this is a theory that I have. So Jaegermeister, which is his favorite alcoholic beverage, I actually think that's like his f***ing lifeblood. Because that's the only thing that's keeping him f***ing alive right now, I think. Because this man tests the human body so hard. He, like Art said, he literally should be on deathbed right now. He should be, like, on his way out. But yet he's still going through strong. He's got that DSP luck, but for his body. I mean, maybe it's like, you hear the anecdotes of some old guy that retires at the age of 80 and then the ne- next week he dies. Like, the, the work was what was keeping him alive. Maybe the, the alcoholism and just the, the lifestyle the is keeping, is the only using Blade alive at this point. <laughs> if he stopped, like, that's the end. Well, like, it's, it's also wild because he, the only reason he's, like, this drunk is because he just surrounds himself around people that let him get this drunk. Like, he's on kick streams with people who are like, yeah, dude, just go and drink, just go party, just go wild. Like, his f***ing girlfriend, the moment he stops drinking, she's like, yeah, you're kind of a boring person sober. Like, why the f*** oh, would you God. say that to an alcoholic, dude? What in the actual f*** is even happening? But... Yeah, Blade's well, I, one of those guys. Since we're talking like, about this weird kick streaming live IRL thing, can anyone explain to me how Neon is the most popular streamer in the world right now? I think it's because they all stream together. That's all. He's he's super outrageous. I I because he was like a Fortnite streamer or something a couple years ago. He disappeared for a while. Then he came back with a vengeance, where all these clips started trending of him just being just absolutely unhinged and abrasive. And then he started hanging out with uh, Sneeko and the... Aiden Ross the, and all those guys. Yeah, they're like the red-pilled Miami crowd. I know that Sneeko was talking about start, starting a, uh, a creator house with uh, Neon and a couple of those other guys. Uh, with like Fousey Tube and stuff. Dude, that'll, so. be, that'll be wild. That'd dude, be the best. Dude, I, dude, that is just like, that is like content <laughs> waiting to fuck happen bro like th- how long do you think a house like that could last actually, be, actually two questions two questions 10 on a lot of crack there, there's two questions <laughs> how long do you think a house like that could last and how long do you think a house like that could last without fuzzy tube these are two very different questions with fuzzy tube, Fousey tube at some go ahead, yeah, you go ahead. Go ahead. Jay. i was going to say that with fuzzy tube at some point will be kicked out it'll yeah. be like an elimination sure. of who's like the least unhinged of the group and they'll be the ones that get to keep the house at the end it should be a challenge like that. Um, Fuzi will just have a mental breakdown and then end up like having to move back to you know his relative's uh, house or something to to stabilize. And then, the <laughs> and then rest he'll of come back go five on. years later with the new thing. Is he uh, uh, is he still in the mental hospital? I think he is. I think he's still in oh, the Miami God. ward and he's going to be there for a minute. Yeah. I was talking to Jen about it and like the idea was like and they would keep you in because I don't think they've ruled out any like like court ruling possibly they haven't ruled any of the legal stuff out well so they're i think uh when you go past the 72 hour hold it is a court ordered hold so i think you have to go to court if you stay past the 72 hours because at that point you're a danger to society at least in texas Caleb, i think a, yeah it is i think a they wonder, ruled him a danger it's amazing to me that you know that like i have a very damn, close bro. friend that was almost held involuntarily <laughs> oh, <my laughs> so, yeah, of course personal of course, experience 
Right. Well, I, like, for his safety and everyone else around him, obviously so. Like I said, the only thing in that night that, like, saved his life was his bodyguard who went out to the cops and is like, he's just crazy. Yeah. Don't go in there, guns blazing. Yeah, that man could have been so bad, dude. I think at this point for Fousey, since this has been a trend where this has happened to him multiple times in the past, I think he just needs to have someone that's kind of kind of taking care of, like, stuff, conservatorship of some sort. Yeah, I agree. Uh, for his own best interests, like, someone to live with him, control his money, you know, give him enough where he could spend stuff, and, you know, maybe he could stream if they're monitoring it, or he can make videos, they upload it, but he can't respond to people online, because he's a talented guy and very charismatic when he wants to be, um, but the idea that he's just going to get out of the mental hospital and then go back on to kick to live stream again uh, that that is just insanity if the system allows that's that. one of my favorite ideas what you said the idea that that is allowed would be uh that uh, yeah, yeah that's it's crazy it's crazy it's great that, that, that's I mean, probably like, what's gonna happen though to be honest yeah. the thing is with him it's like he's like when he wants to be an entertaining funny guy he can be it's just like had it not been for that airport incident, I would have still been on his side, you know? Like, I would have been like, oh, yeah, I like Fousey. Maybe he needs some time. But he just does certain things that I think are just so f***ing unforgivable, you know? It's it's honestly baffling how someone could even stumble upon those situations so frequently. Like, because mm -hmm. um, imagine us. We just go about our lives and, you know, we have normal conversations with people. And then these lot in real life streamers, they just stumble upon the most bizarre of individuals. And it's not staged. That's the craziest part about it. They really are finding these people. Somehow, I, I feel that uh, I think you know, they craziness gravitate towards attracts each other. more craziness. Yeah. They, yeah. It's, it's wild. Well, how, much do you, do you, how much do you think it's, like, also just faked, though? I really do think a lot of it is faked. I do too. The Fousey stuff, I don't think any of it was faked. Yeah, but like uh, anything that know. Aiden Ross and people bring on though, like I think a lot of those people have like, I think, I I do have to believe that there's a careful amount of fakery that goes on because sometimes it's just, it's like they it's like they live their life on like wild, like wasteland perk enabled. Like it's just fucking, now, everything is super weird happening to you, them. You don't, think, so. you don't think any of it is fake with Fousey? Do you think that there's maybe situations that were proposed <laughs> to Fousey, and then he's just, like, let to do his own thing, kind of, and maybe someone else. Who's running it for him? I don't, I mean, like, because Aiden Ross has been known to kind of put people into situations to to incite certain reactions or certain things out of people. Like, like when uh, Fousey went to Jack Doherty's house and started, like, slapping him around and beating him up, I feel like if that was real, I w if I was Jack, I would have called the police, because he, sla he slapped me in my own house. The thing is, if you're dealing with another content creator that is the issue game is, for controversy... Right, you'll, you'll look like he, a beta if you call the police. You'll look like a it, loser. Well, one, you'll look like a beta male, and you're in Miami in the red pill community, so you can't be doing any of that. Actually, I don't know much about that TikToker. But secondly, uh, f like... I've been in situations when I went to, like, when I went to film with Chris Chan for the documentary, this was cut because the footage wasn't very good, but the neighbor across the street was like, Sh you know, put your camera down or I'm going to kick your ass, and he's threatening me. And half of me is worried, but the other half of me is like, this is really good material. When you're filming and you're a content creator, even when bad things are happening, it's still good material, and you're thinking in the back of your head, I can't mm. wait to watch this back and get a bunch of attention from it. True. Um, so just... there's a difference between someone like Fousey harassing you with no camera around and you're just some general person of the Got public you. versus you're a content creator. And then, like, if Fousey came up to me and slapped me or something, I'm not going to call the cops. I'll take the footage and then make a video about it, exploiting right. it to get myself a million also, views. But on the yeah. same, you know, there's just one counter counterpoint. There's also the potential that you could just say, hey, go instigate Fousey. Uh, you know, to try to, to create content, which that in and of itself could be could be faked in a sense as well. I mean, I, it just a lot of it seems like the the airport thing. I think I think was real, um, and that's disgusting and just like pretty invalidating uh, to him as a person. Obviously, he's mentally ill and needs help or whatever. But like everything else is just kind of easily fakeable. Yeah, I mean, that's just like yeah. up, the the airport yeah. thing. The airport stuff is like, yeah, just because you're mentally ill doesn't mean, like, yeah. oh, you have a f***ing free pass to be yeah. a douchebag, right? Yeah, there's a reason right? he's still like, in the yeah. mental hospital. Yeah. And the, and the thing about, like, the Jack Doherty shit is, like, I, I kind of have to think it's, like, if there's no cops being called, then there's kind of, like, there's, like, there's got to be, like, a safe word in a situation like that, you know? Like, you bring somebody over, you let them f*** up your place a little bit for the content, but obviously if he goes beyond any moment, there's probably a safe word or like a security team that comes in and like pins the dude down if he actually goes too far, right? There was like, like 10 people there and at no point did that 
kid tell Fuzi to leave. Yeah, that's why it just like, seemed fake around. to me. No, the kid just saw it as good content. He thought it was funny. He knew there were so many people around. He wasn't actually at risk of anything. Um, it was just, I'm going to take a little bit of abuse for Dude, good entertainment. I could definitely see that being the mm -hmm. case. Bro, ever since the fucking, ever since the Tanner, like, getting shot in the fucking food court incident, I don't take any risks like that, dude. Mentally ill people are mentally ill. They would, they don't think rationally is the thing, right? And that's no dis- like, if you're manic, if you're, if you're in that situation, all rationality is gone, right? When you think that you're safe because ten people are there, that's you thinking you're safe because you're thinking rationally. This, this guy is not rational. He's going to attack you if he feels like he wants to, you know? I don't know if like, that's the I don't think they're thing. thinking rationally. I think that they're they're in content creator grind mode. Yeah. And anything that I happens guess. that's good oh. content, they're just cheering on the inside. That it, the, the it's like, thing it's I like an example. Oh. Logan Paul seeing the body in the forest, in Suicide Forest. Man was giddy with excitement that he was going to make a video with where he actually found the guy that killed himself. Like, as crazy as that sounds. But he was so excited to get on trending with this banger video. Did you guys see the uh, the guy who unblurred his face and it? he's claiming that it's Logan Paul? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw the video when like, Tom Alert posted it. I was like, Dude, get the fuck you know who here. sent that to Keem? Who? You? Yeah! <laughs> But you know oh it's God. not real, though. So I talked to the guy. Uh, I talked to the guy, uh, Lonabu, um, and he's okay. a really he's a really genuine guy. He's definitely like on like not not on something as in he's like on drugs or whatever. But he appears uh, uh, very impassioned by this, and I was curious as to why. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share like why his like why he wanted to prove this, but it involves his own. Uh, struggle with suicide, um, and that's why okay. he he wants to to prove that look because he believes uh, that it's like you know it's easier to forgive ignorance than it is to forgive deception. Um, that's kind of like the 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 d distillation yeah. of what I got from talking to him. Like it makes more. I, I'm not saying Logan faked anything, um, but uh, there's like three main points of evidence that this guy had. He had like 90 chapters in his video that were supposed to go up, but every single one that had what he would consider a valid counter argument he took out so he only has like five chapters or whatever in his video that he posted uh that okay. drama alert retweeted and the three the three main points were one the de-blurring which i don't know how the how to prove that at all i sent him a picture of one of my friends blurred a uh, gaussian blur and if he can show my friend's face that he's never seen before uh using his de-blurring method then it's like there's some validity there um uh and if uh, there's a there's an instance in the with the the rope around the tree. There's three knots and one, knots and, and then there's five in one shot. More. And also when uh, the camera like turns back and forth, the scenery changes multiple times, um, as if it's like filmed in different in, in different areas. Which I don't really. So go ahead. the the one defense for that last one is they may have been just hiding um, cuts in the whip lashes, not because they right, were trying to fake something, but rather they needed a. They, it's five minutes of, of content. They want to cut it down to three, so every time there's a whip pan, they cut to yeah. a new clip. That one's. Um, I think so, that one's easily explainable. Yeah, so that one's understandable without it being a hoax. And the three um, to five rope things. I mean, I feel I feel as though uh, compression artifacting with video footage that's been uploaded and re-uploaded and uploaded and re-uploaded so many times probably could describe that because sometimes data gets lost. But the main thing is the deblurring. If the deblurring is legit, uh, then that's like an extra really interesting thing. But other than that, it's like man, I don't. That's something that we kind of because the way that you think about it, right? Like deblurring could in theory be undone right like it's not that because when you when you gosh and blur in like premiere you put an effect on you blur it up but like could there be a way that you could just like unblur or is that like algorithm that blurs the effect is it like random like I just that's the thing that i'm thinking i just don't know how you could unblur something you'd have to be adding information because that's what blurring is it's it's mixing up information so you can't so the 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 original signal I mean, the, what, the original what source I think is saying what i think mood is saying is that how does the blurring effect work? Does it work the same way on everything you're blurring? In which case, can you kind of counteract? It, it just mixes up the original signal like, using a Gaussian blur. But is the information still present, or is it like no. information being d deleted as the blur is the, happening? If you were to have the original source file, the information would still be present. If you can take the blur off, the information would still be present. But if you're recompressing a video file, the information is no longer present. Okay. Mm. 
Yeah, so, from, that's my under. I mean, that that's I, I was a compression technician for like six months. Okay. <laughs> that's so my like, only understanding so like, that I can so, bring to this. So basically, de blurring the entire video would mean that you're actually just adding information. You're adding. You, yeah. That's in my opinion, you'd have to be adding in information. You have okay, to add information. Did anyone actually think that was real? Like, no one actually thought that was real, right? <laughs> I, when I saw that well, look, deblurring I, I, logo we have to be very careful with this by the way because this stuff gets kicked of course. off on YouTube really fast so. yeah, any talk of uh, sewer slide gets, gets well, yeah. annihilated by YouTube this, this, is a, uh, this is like Vegas shooter territory of a subject yeah. matter for YouTube, yeah. Yeah, YouTube I, like I, look as far as I'm going to say on this whole thing is like listen Logan Paul is a really really deceptive piece of shit if he yes. faked something of this magnitude, I'm not going to be surprised. You know, this is like Same. yandere dev yeah. talking to miners level of surprise. I'm just, I'm going to be like, all right, cool. I expected it, right? Like this yeah, is Logan sense. Paul. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll be honest, anything dude, this guy done I think real. the crypto zoo thing is even wilder than the suicide forest thing. The crypto uh, like, zoo I, stuff, I, I man. Think it's it's even worse. It's about to. It's about to be a year since he's paid anybody back. So, although, anybody. although I do think that um, someone, I could understand the headspace of someone wanting to scam their fans more than I could understand the headspace of someone who wanted to upload that. Even if you had video. all of what Logan Paul had, you'd still think of scamming the like, audience. I'm, like, I'm just what? trying to put, put myself in those shoes. Like, uh. I could, if I, dude, if I was Logan Paul, I wouldn't start boxing people now either. Like, mm. why? Yeah, you have like, enough money, yeah. bro. Yeah, you have to wonder if a person has so much money that they, they never will be worrying about it in their entire life and they still agree to do boxing matches for more money when they're risking brain damage. Um, it, it's You're on a different tier of human being. <laughs> I think maybe it's just like, maybe he loves the content. Maybe it's just like, the, okay, so the forest it's incident, the, the forest stuff makes sense to me for Logan content. Paul because... Because it's like, like, like somebody here said earlier, it's it's getting on trending. Because you're thinking about, I think Nux, you said it's like getting number one on trending. Like that's like the ultimate f***ing rush, you know, for at least a content creator. It's like yeah. if you're the number one video on the website. So for some people, and I'm going to say for the Pauls, it's probably more important than money or anything. It's just like that f***ing hit of fame, right? Like, oh shit, I'm like that relevant. I'm still number one. I'm still kicking it to the top. Even if it's by like the most methods possible, right? Because like... All of us would love if we were if one of our videos was number one on trending, right? Sure. Logan Paul, he found a way to fucking do it more than the average creator ever did. So you know, props where props are fucking due. <laughs> but if it's fake, I can't be I can't really be shocked about it, right? Fun, and, uh, fun, fun fact: the 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 hat that he wears in that video, um, it's only sold at Disneyland Japan, and I actually got one imported, so I, I own the same exact hat. Let's That's go! Pretty funny. Let's go! God damn it! What no, but legend. like with Logan Paul, it's like with all of his like with crypto zoo shit, I really, really wonder if he's going to have like any repercussions from this too. Like even legally, like that SBF guy, if you guys haven't been following him, he is like ultra, f like he is ultra, like beyond. Yep. He's like Turkish, That's like scammer levels of f right now. There's no well, out for him anymore. He's in the same position as like Bernie Madoff. Um, I don't think he's ever getting out of prison. They're, they're throwing the book at him and making him an example. Yeah, and Bernie Madoff was more more well connected than Sam Bankman Fried. I think he's going to get well. Shout all the out, connections that he had to my went fellow right out Jews the window out too. There holding up the community. What? Once you start mucking up your rich friends and your investors and shit, yeah, they don't want to do anything with you. They want to make you an example, so the whole heat is thrown off from them. It's a game for these people, right? Like, and Bernie. I'll, and for SBF, it's like that dude is a in. I, I that dude is that dude is like. In, on a different planet you know like in terms of his interactions with people do you know how much he paid tom brady for 20 hours of of use for filming commercials for ftx how much 55 million dollars for 20 hours oh so he's neurodivergent uh, tom brady maybe <laughs> no 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 no, no. sbs <laughs> Well, him too. <laughs> Tom, no, uh, Tom Brady's smart. He got fifty-five million for it in a day, dude. No, now he's being sued by a bunch of people. That, that he's included in all these lawsuits about FTX now um, because he was backing it. Also, apparently, it came out that Taylor Swift had like was signing a deal to promote FTX. Taylor so Swift, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, Taylor Swift was so she dodged like the biggest bullet of all time by not taking that a Super Mario bullet. Dude, it's it's Close like it's like anybody in the crypto space, dude. Like, and I was looking into uh into um, who is it? Uh, Bitboy, dude. Bitboy is killing Love it, Bitboy. dude. Bitboy makes like allegedly Bitboy makes like a million a month. 
Wait, still? So it's Even like, after all it, this went down? No, no, no. But, like, this was... Okay, here's the thing. Crypto, like, during his channel's, like, heyday or, like, as he was running his channel, like, you look at the numbers for BitBoy Crypto and you look at the revenue per month, it can dwarfs anything that we're doing, right? And this is just, yeah. like, one guy in crypto. So if you're in the finance sphere on YouTube, if you're in the crypto sphere, in, like, two years, you made enough to bankroll a couple of companies and live off the grid just fine like live rich and and whatnot it's a whole different yeah. world dude like like a finance channel makes five times as much money off adsense than we do for the same amount of views yeah it's insane really? and yeah, yeah. and so, what's so annoying yeah. about it is i love finance channels that like make videos showing their analytics and it's like off 1000 views i made a thousand dollars and they're just like what am i doing wrong you know but it's I can't. It's like, like it's like on one it. hand you've got like the finance channels, and on the other hand you got the CPM of like Nico Cotto Avocado or some shit, <laughs> where it's just like that is CPM, like nothing. Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. speaking of Nico Cotto Avocado, the exact opposite. Have you seen that Eugenia Cooney girl? Like yeah. lately, she never got better. <laughs> Bro, no. I, I like I, I, every year the internet has this thing where they have like, oh, we need to help Eugenia Cooney, and I'm like, bro, she's like an adult. Like no, at no, some so point. Just I, I looked, I looked at her channel a while back, a couple months ago, and she was making videos kind of clickbaiting, baiting up like she needing help or something, and mm -hmm. it was just like a completely subversion to like get people to click on the video. So she almost is like toying with people about it at this point on occasion. I'm just wondering how she's actually alive. Like every time she was moving in that recent video, I'm like, I feel like her bones are going to snap like off. <laughs> Like, there's Here's no the, muscle holding The up. thing is, like, a couple of years ago when, it, when like, PewDiePie was at, saying that she needed help and stuff, everyone, there was, like, experts saying, oh, she has, like, a year left to live. Um, oh, really? But she's, is that a thing? I mean, people say that, but you, you don't know anything about the their actual medical history. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of yeah. these people where, same thing with, like, Only Use Me Blade or, you know, the, the Slayton sisters. There There's cases where they say, oh, these people are going to be um, dead in six months from what they're doing with their body. Um, but they plug along. Um, you're just, they're just gambling with their life at that point where the second you have a complication, your body's not going to be able to fight it in any way. Yeah. There's no guarantee of death. It's just unless you're like actually doing something that's going to hurt you to the point where you die. Yeah. Even the wildest stuff is like anytime that kind of shit happens, there's like T channels on the internet, like tarot card channels. T -ch I call them the same because they're both fucking trash. But like you get these tarot card channels that are like flipping the fucking tarot cards and predicting when this like influencer is going to die or some shit. I'm like, you guys are fucking unhinged, dude. Yeah. There's people that, that unironically watch it, which is hilarious. But yeah, unless you have like somebody's tests, like unless you've like done blood tests, like all kinds of tests on them, you have no fucking idea, right? Like, yeah. I'm still We're joking about by, only uh, use me blade. last episode. A Tozy told us that story. I, I looked it up because I was so curious. He was telling us that story about um, what was it? That the one courtroom? fortune, yeah. the fortune teller or whatever that said that. Oh, this teacher is a school shooter after someone like did something terrible. And uh, now, obviously, that fortune teller is being sued for slander. But uh, like, how do people do this? And how do they have an audience? because because people love consuming shit like pink sauce how do people still buy that crap i own a bottle do they do you really do you have a you have a bottle of pink sauce i'm sorry he's gonna get oh, it damn. you better eat caleb, it on camera caleb did you get your pink sauce at all no. or did you get a refund I, I don't even know if i got a refund dude okay have you been following the pink sauce lady have you kept up dude, on I, it? I have a huge video coming out about it tomorrow all dude, right dude I, I just covered it again so but i was at yeah. walmart and um because that's where i shot my man that um, looks well, like ranch it, it was originally uh seven dollars and 78 cents i got it on clearance for two dollars yeah nice it looks it looks brown though it looks expired as yeah it's not pink in any way like if the bot if you don't look at the bottle um at all like you never could you, think could you taste it on camera <laughs> you want me to <laughs> is it expired oh, oh no i don't Yo, think wait, so wait check the expiry then i want you to like die on us one second i should get chicken tendy to dip it in that's insane we're actually seeing somebody for the first time dude that's we talked about streamers hand. dying on camera first podcaster to die on camera <laughs> oh there's an extra seal at least i give her credit oh it, it, no you gotta get the cap is not on it's not. It wasn't sealed. It just came right off. Oh, Dave Gourmet, baby. I, I don't know. 
I don't know if you should. Dude, if this was any other product in the world, I would say, oh, yeah, it just happened. It, uh, you know. is it, how bad is the smell? Like, how it bad is it? It smells like ranch dressing with, like, a sweet undernote, and it just tastes, it smells off. I don't know. <laughs> that seal wasn't on, dude. I wouldn't risk it. It tastes like ranch with a little, a little bit of uh, balsamic dressing mixed in and uh, like a little sweet, spicy aftertaste. Um, it's not that bad, honestly. I was playing it up a little bit too much, I guess. But we'll see. Maybe I die. All right, yeah, let's go. You You'll be high. Like, that's so crazy. It's like we actually had like somebody try pink sauce for the first time. So that was like two bucks clear. And so, Dude, I'll, yeah, there was the, a ton of them too. It was crazy. The, that's, a, that's the wildest thing about her. So like, and I even talked about it in like the podcast, but I discussed like we're working on like skincare stuff too and like the logistics and all of the formulation, like that stuff is hard. Like that stuff takes a long time, you know? Yeah. And you need to get like a whole team with you. She had the golden bag. All she had to yeah. do, like literally like a lifeline came in, did all of the hard work for her, got her shit into Walmart, which is hilarious because anytime an influencer gets their product into Walmart, we're like, that's a pretty big deal, yeah. right? Like Feastables shows up at Walmart. We're like, cool. Pink sauce lady, she's in Walmart with like a literal fucking fraction of the influence that Mr. Beast has. If she literally sat down every day and made recipes with pink sauce, like on TikTok, they didn't even have she could to be have good. Been killed promoting it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the sauce itself isn't really like setting the world on fire, but like if you just put it on like chicken wings every day, people would buy it. And she decides not to fucking meet her obligations. And here's the funniest part about it too. So, Caleb, you, did you read the did you read the response by Dave's Gourmet? Like they mm -hmm. detailed the accounting. Yeah. So. For context's sake, I read this from um, oh no, they did in .com, Okay, so just <laughs> full clarification. It's a little bit of a sketchier source, but uh, you didn't see the Business Insider article. I saw the Business Insider article, but I went to the source that I think the Business Insider article that was going to because when I copy pasted like the Dave's response into Google, that was the one site, the the weird okay. like with the whole like press it's announcement, which is what I It's a good thing you said that you saw it on oh no you didn't com because Maddox was about to make another video on how you were plagiarizing. <laughs> Maddox, like that's an idiot. But anyways, like the funniest thing about like Dave's Gourmet is like Dave's Gourmet, like they literally said that she had spent like somewhere, like she had asked for like $10,000 for her birthday party. And like in hundreds of dollars for dresses and shoes, she was trying to route her grocery bills through the Dave's Gourmet accounting team. Let's go. Like, what the? F like, literally, straight up asking them to just embezzle some cash around, even if it's like a tiny bit. Um, genius. And very genius stuff. And anyway, she like basically like in the middle. So she had to, from what I understand, attend a meeting once a week, right, to discuss brand strategy, which is like nothing. It's like you spend like an hour discussing yeah, your nothing. brand. She, she rage quit. She literally rage quit this deal and like fucking ran off. One of her biggest catalysts was she was supposed to pay refunds to people like Caleb who bought her sauce. Now, she did not meet those obligations. And even when she didn't, Dave's Gourmet apparently gave her money to like cover refunds. Like mm -hmm. above and beyond what they should have done. If Dave's Gourmet is 100% right, they are the most like patient company in the united states of america and Jesus they, Christ. they chose to not enforce the breaches of contract to not sour the relationship any further like they're they, they're because they, well the, for one they're not going to be able to get anything from her no. for one there's mm -hmm. none there's nothing to be had other than just maybe the brand they can just like get the ip but even then it's failed like it's it's because uh, they can't market it and she's an idiot so it's just it's just a terrible idea overall she she got over a million dollars of free press when this started like it, it, it's you can't pay for that. Uh, I, I, oh, she, dude, she had everything going for her. Even if you were ripping on her sauce, like all of us were, that's still like an eyes going to her website. No, she would have so still many made people would just buy it out of curiosity for the meme of it. It's it's mm -hmm. not even because oh it tastes good. Um, it's just oh let's me and my buddies are gonna try it out. The reason why I got it out of curiosity for two dollars. Um, I wouldn't pay full price for it, but I'll pay two bucks. Um, yeah. The problem is it just doesn't taste good, so there's not going to be any repeat sales. But like she, she but loses she could all have of it. She's probably made I mean, enough off the people interested to sell the company to some random food thing and walk away with a really fat bag. And they could have reformulated pink sauce into something, something that actually was, but, and moved but on. 
Uh, speaking to that, though, the only reason that it was even remotely had any sort of market demand was because of her and her videos and because of people hating on it. So, like, even if someone bought the IP and brand, it would be worthless. So, well, so was, it's not a good sauce. Was but, Dave Scormay involved in it right from the very beginning or did they step no. in when it was falling apart? No, they, they stepped in when they saw the virality of it on TikTok. Unbelievable. Yeah. So they just came in and would do everything. Yeah, that's I, I haven't I haven't looked at any of the follow ups. I knew it like bombed and she was like begging for money on GoFundMe it, or it, something. But it brings into question the leadership at Dave's Gourmet. Like, I'm gonna be real. If somebody at my company was like, hey, let's just start like like onboarding this new sauce that just got virality on TikTok. And I was like, oh, who's running it? Oh, you want to bring that person and give them a deal? Well, you're f***ing fired for stupid, like gross negligence. <laughs> like that would, add, like, because it's got to have cost Dave's Gourmet like a chunk of f***ing money, obviously, paying her and like all of the bullshit associated with this. Um, Who is yeah. Dave? He's a kind uh, soul. They, dude, Dave. Dave's he's insanity is like the OG hot hot sauce, like the super hot stuff. I have it in my fridge. It's like, it's it, well, Dave, Dave's gourmet has been around since like 1996, bro. Like yeah. they're mm -hmm. fucking. This is probably like how they thought they were gonna get in with the hip crowd again, right? Like in on TikTok. Little did they know they weren't working with like a Mr. Beast or like somebody that had like you know like yeah you're crazy on camera, but you're, there's a an intelligent person behind the scenes, right? Like she's just straight stupid. Like she had no an idea. What if they like replaced her with like Fuzzy Tube as the face of Pink Sauce? Yeah, well, Pink Sauce would fucking kill it. Honest yeah. to God, <laughs> bro, I could see Fuzzy like Fuzi, slathering listen, that shit over his oh, yeah. face and running oh, through yeah. Vegas. Ultimately, though, Fuzzy Tube wants to succeed. She, I don't think, even knew what she was doing at all. We're and gonna get Fuzzy a sour boy flavor. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, no get away. We'll get in touch with them. Who would you give? Would you? What flavor would you give? I don't know. Crazy berry. <laughs> Man manic berries. No. Well, manic crying, melon. <laughs> that would work though. He's bald. So I'd that buy makes it. Sense. Dude, but yeah. but the funniest thing about her too is like you're right. Like if Fousey got pink sauce, that shit would sell in the tens of millions. That dude would that dude would slather that shit over his face and run through fucking Skid Row if he had he would. to. He would. Uh, he would start the grimace shake trend all over again. What if he took pink sauce and threw it into the fucking, like, uh, Miami Red Pill crowd? <laughs> like, you just had them promote it the Dude, whole see, time. the like, thing is, awesome. those guys <laughs> believe success is very much tied to wealth. So, those guys would actually promote it. They wouldn't bomb the whole company for their own ego. Um, Probably. Not for their own <laughs> ego, per se. I mean, they might actually bomb it for their own ego. No, let's, let's not kid ourselves okay, here. Listen, listen, I don't think they would. I, I think True. that they, uh, but speaking of pink sauce and the Grimace shake, that brings me perfectly into the wonderful segue that you missed last week, the Aiden Ross clip of the week. Now, Jesus I Christ. watched, I rewatched the quite episode that you did that I got disconnected in middle to make sure someone did an Aiden Ross clip of the week and no one did. God damn it, people. Honestly, for shame, Dude, he, for shame. I just, I'm still surprised how you find so many clips of this guy. And you know, honestly, like given that we're talking about this, I feel like Aiden's just like, I, I don't give him a lot of credit. I think he's a genius. I think he's actually smart. I think he's like got a talent of corralling people in. All right, well, I all posted the, time. the clip in the chat and this might change your mind. <laughs> it's not gonna change. He's a an intellectual no, he, bastard, he is, but let's go. He does know what he's doing. Like, uh, I do think so. 100%. I, w I would involve him if I was selling like Pink Sauce, dude. All right, let's go. He's trying the Grimace shake here? Yeah. Hey, this right, is, the, you guys are about to watch a modern-day George Carlin at work. <laughs> <laughs> True right, comedian. Let's go. Just drink it. Just drink it. Do you guys, act, do you think, guys think he's going to drink it? All right, yeah. guys. I, I would Grimace. imagine so. It's like, it's wild to be scared, bro. All right, fuck it. All right, it's just drinking a shake. Ooh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> why, why did he black himself wait, wait, out? Wait, it What's gets better. It gets better. Imagine Andrew Tate seeing this, dude. Just I was blown, blown dude, away, dude. Holy shit! 
I mean, just the like paternal, just <laughs> like these are like the geek that I have for that. So, oh. so he purposely blacked out the screen at one point. Yes. Yeah. So, I must so say no one could see what he was doing. That's actually a, a very pretty uh, concept for like a bit that you're actually like if he just showed himself spilling it on him, it's like whatever. He's just embarrassing himself. But the cut to black actually adds. Something you are giving to it way where... too much credit to this man. That was the that, grimace I mean, shake. That is the meme. meme. That was the that meme. Is the meme. That is the, the grimace meme shake. Was meme was that, that they like, drink the grimace shake like, yeah. and it goes black and then oh god, they're they're yeah, and then, they it, and like then it cuts back to it. That's what it is. Okay, whatever. Yeah, he he's just ripping it off and doing it way worse than. Anyone else? Everyone else. Anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, I just, I like, imagine, like, if you were related to him, right? Like, he, he was oh your brother. Dude. You were total polar opposites. Dude. And you have to, like, hear that from the other room of your, like, mansion that you guys live in. Like, you just have to hear that screaming going on. I don't think he's the most embarrassing child of the family, though. God, I love Jews. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> is there more? Wait, is there more Ross? Oh, you're talking about oh, his, his sister. sister. Yeah. Oh. Okay, but like, but to be fair, like, what's more embarrassing? Like, her, like, okay, whatever. She does OnlyFans, cool. That's like your thing. He watches his sister on OnlyFans for more than like five <laughs> seconds. That's what. Yeah, that's a, more fucked yeah. up. That's worse. Like, like, dude, okay, you recognize what your siblings look like from their face, right? Like, you would instantly turn off anything porn related if you, as soon as you saw their face, bro. He leaves that on for a good five, ten seconds. Now, my favorite he, thing like, is his explanation. Out. Like when someone says, "I accidentally jacked off to my sister's nudes," is that weird? And his response is, "You did God's work, bro. We've all done that." Like that is not a normal <laughs> response, dude. Dude, dude that that whole family is so floridian it's not even funny i, I mean dude. i love that at the same time when he has andrew tate on he always makes these like gay comments like you know i'm really attracted to you andrew he'd, he'd say stuff like that just to to get the reaction you know, it's it's funny because that's how he got popular in the first place you would what? just have rappers on and act oh, gay and, and make that's them like, really do. uncomfortable yeah it, dude there was like there i shit you not there's like 35 sus compilations of Aiden Ross, where he, he would just bring rappers and like act a little gay, and the rappers would freak the f out at any sort of like male gayness at all. Like they would just freak out. Like literally, it was like it was actually hilarious because like if one of my buddies would like just act slightly gay, I'm like, all right, whatever, that's kind of weird, but sure. These guys would like jump out of their chairs like cats seeing dogs and freak out. See, but like that's <laughs> like, I mean, like that, that's... you do kind of see the appeal of the content then, right? Like he got hilarious reactions out of these people for you know seemingly mm -hmm. innocuous or stupid things. Like that is yeah. the content. Like I, I mean, but like the thing is, he's also he like this this man like okay if if you could give a if like compound V was a real thing, his superpower would be no shame, like literally no fucking shame. Like think about it for a second, a man that could say I jacked off to my sister's nudes, you would go through a million loops in your head before that thing would utter out through your mouth. He does that instantly. There's no shame. I, I don't like, even think it's no shame. I it. think it's like I don't even believe when he says he does things i don't believe them i think he just says it for the it. shock value like when when speed mm, shows, showed his mix. dick or whatever on on stream and they said to him it's like speed showed his dick on stream what do you think and his response is well i saw dude i saw speed's dick in person thousands of times like that's his instant <laughs> response dude just turned 18 like come on man like i i just think okay, he... okay to be fair he could have seen it a thousand times after the birthday right, right i mean right. if every moment counts as like a time yeah. and you just no, saw but, it for like 10 seconds that that's like an infinite is, amount of times i don't think he actually does these things that are quote unquote sus i just think that's his brand of humor uh, right not that yeah. i not my style per se, but, but you know. But my counterpoint: if you can look at your sibling naked for more than five seconds, maybe that leads credence into some behaviors. You know, <laughs> dude, dude's I, a psycho. I'm, a not, lot of I'm not defending uh, <laughs> the psychosis here. I'm just, I'm just saying. I think he knows exactly what he's doing. Who do you think? Who do you think is going to be the next Ross though on the kick Twitch streaming? Who do you think is like lined up to take over? Neon, because he's not going to be there. Neon. Yeah, I think that guy's going to be around for a while. I agree, yeah. He's going to blow up even more. Like, right now, like, 
uh, like a couple months ago, you like no one ever heard of that guy. He was like just some small time streamer that mm-hmm. disappeared for a while. He comes back with a couple clips. They're unhinged. And you're like, who is that guy? You Google it, and now he's hanging out with Sneeko and like doing all this stuff. Going to be in a creator house. That that kid's not going to stop anytime soon, and he's going to blow up and do something that's going to get mainstream attention. Like the news hasn't picked up on him yet. Like at this point, there's a bunch of mainstream outlets that will cover Aiden Ross, Andrew Tate, XQC. They have not touched Neon yet. Okay, well, I think Andrew Tate's like a different level than Aiden Ross and XQC. Yeah, the different level. But what I mean is, they're not noticed until they are, and then at that point, it's every day there's some new update on you know, Wall Street Journal covering them or one of those mainstream outlets. Yeah, I uh, get what you're saying. If you don't until you get scrutiny in that extra level uh you're kind of able to get away with a lot more stuff without being censored uh so neon's gonna do something i don't know what it's going to be though he's just like he i I feel like the the whole thing is he's just attached himself to like the the andrew like sorry not the andrew but the aiden ross shit aiden ross is like i think he just like i think he he's like aiden ross is like the perfect like in he's what ice poseidon wanted to be i think right like fucking he could actually run these content houses where he's unhinged and crazy but like just smart enough to like get like from what i heard aiden ross like pretty much takes like 20 percent of like yeah, whatever these guys too. make into like his pool like he's just he literally has created like a brand of like brain dead <laughs> creators that's all he's done and like his only incentive is like i'm on this platform you can be as crazy as you want to be so can go buck wild right like, yeah, but it's interesting Johnny, how like Johnny he's Somali. also protecting his own brand in a way <laughs> like he that guy will get banned for doing some crazy shit on the platform but and he might even get banned but aiden ross will still be around well that's because aiden ross probably owns like a portion of the brand too when you own your own brand yeah, it's like helps. of course you're not gonna get fucking banned ever like you're gonna be in there which is smart like really smart on his fucking behalf but uh yeah you know i'm not gonna get into the whole like argument is like is aiden ross ruining society i feel like if you're stupid enough to get influenced by creators on kick then you were just a loser to begin with okay (laughs) simple as that let these people be well i i i enjoy the stupidity from these guys because it allows us to just make content off of their stupidity and like make fun of it but like at the end of the day it's like nothing that these people do surprise me it's like the natural evolution of the internet you know like twitch We've always been bitching, bitching about like Twitch and like their inconsistent rules and everything. So now Kick has come around, and now people are allowed to go f-ing crazy on live streams. They don't even give a shit. Like, break every rule that you possibly can imagine. <laughs> Get banned for saying the N word, I guess. But break every other f-ing rule, and you're fine. So yeah. are like black people not allowed to say the N word as well, or is it just white people? I think you get a pass if you're black. I think that's I think that's like an unwritten rule on every site. Like you can get away with it on YouTube even. Do they make people take like twenty three and me tests to like see and is there like a threshold? God, that would be wild. That's the thing. That's why I don't think they are like other platforms. They don't even have uh, like an N word ban. Like even YouTube, I don't think because they don't want. they don't want to be the one that's like deciding on like who's they, they black. might use they might use machine learning and like calculate the pigmentation of the fucking streamer and just be like all right passed no pass you know like nux couldn't get away with it obviously hey, we don't know what you nux don't know like, you don't know that all we know is what your fucking vtuber says about you and right now you're whiter than everyone in this fucking <laughs> call <laughs> God damn it. Although, but, although, since, yeah. since I know you loved your VTuber drama, there was this whole drama in the VTuber community that a lot of um, a lot of black like content creators would have very white VTuber avatars because like the popular anime characters are all white. You know, they're made in Japan. Yeah, so, you'd be white facing. And them. then like there was this whole drama about how like it's it's disrespectful a black creator that has a white avatar it's like they're disrespecting black culture and like they're disrespecting this... themselves yeah there was this whole drama about that that was fun like oh but like isn't that racist though like you're white facing that's racist right yeah. like it doesn't technically that gets into it well i guess is me using a black avatar blackface the big question well Maybe. twitter dude, would probably I, say dude, so I, they don't like me over there probably but dude i love how racist twitter's gotten speaking of yeah, it i love how crazy. racist that shit's gotten dude like we, can i made this i made this post about the f-ing canadian nazis <laughs> dude i bookmarked that tweet so hard it's the f-ing, like literally there's a clan meeting in the quote tweets for that one that i posted bro like five thousand quote tweets of just like dude, the amount of people me, like, that have tried to like defend that to me it's like, but they didn't know. But you think you do your research before celebrating an actual Nazi, you know? It's... 
I'm just saying, bro, like any chance for me to like crap on Justin Trudeau is like fucking all yeah. I need, dude. That's like every Canadian hates that dude. Yeah. For so I don't know how reason. he's still in power. No. But speaking of VTuber drama, one of the greatest VTuber dramas ever happened this week. There's this new... Co- yeah, you were saying I was earlier before, before the we call, started, yeah. Uh, there's this company called Accio Air. We actually mentioned them like two weeks ago when, or three weeks ago when Falsehide mm-hmm. was on the podcast because they hired a minor. And they got into like a lot of trouble for that, obviously, because they're literally hiring a minor to do collabs with, like, not safe for work. Like, How do you like accidentally hire a minor? Don't you I get don't like fucking IDs or something? I don't know. Like, so, hire a minor for what? To be part of their agency, one of the talents in their agency. And that's pretty. Like, I mean, you just can't have them locked into a contract. But a minor with like the parents' permission can be with an so, agency. So first of all, they were locked into a contract. But second of all, he, the wild part was. It wouldn't their, hold up in court, though. Their agency makes not safe for work content. Like a lot of the creators okay. in the agency, like, are more than it's happy like an to, only to fans have fans organization signing up a kid right? or like, something, dude. It, maybe it's what not the... that extreme, but a lot of them, you know, they they talk about very explicit topics in their content, and they call their content mm-hmm. eighteen plus, and then they hire a kid, which is crazy. Um, but that's not even where the story ends. You see. This is a VTuber agency with, like, ten or whatever talents in two generations. And together, all of them, at the same time, quit the agency this week. All of them announced, like, with the whole social post on Twitter about how the CEO's a creep. And so they all Does the whole left. agency just implode it now? It just imploded. Now the guy's threatening lawsuits at everyone. He's throwing lawsuits in the funniest way. He's like, I'm going to sue you. And not only that, but you're going to have to move to Taiwan to fight in court for years. And they're like, no, we won't. <laughs> sure. What? Like, he could sue them in Taiwan. It's like, good, I'll never come to Taiwan. Right, exactly. <laughs> just don't have to do no, it. I, yeah. the, the best one, one, <laughs> of the, one of the VTubers is a nurse. Like, a real-life nurse. Not, like, mm. the role-play nurse. Not a fake nurse? Not, not a role-play cringe not VTuber Not a back alley nurse. nurse. Not but, a like, a real back. nurse. And the guy threatened them. Uh, like, this is nurse. not a quote. I don't remember the exact words. But, like, there was a DM leaked where the guy basically said something along the lines of... Um, I'm just saying, you're breaching contract with me right now by posting all this stuff on Twitter. So if this information was to get back to the hospital where you work at, I don't know how they treat nurses that, that you know, will cause them malpractice insurance issues. It might be very difficult for you to ever get a job Jesus, in another it's hospital. It's thinly veiled threat. <laughs> it's like, Jesus whoa. Christ. It's thinly veiled. Yeah, it's not thinly it's veiled. Like, it's just a threat. It's just a threat. <laughs> It's great when it just goes to life through a nation. Yeah, and another like, good I'm one was... To, I'm going to your job. Yeah, you caused me $100,000 of damages, and unless you're willing to pay that up, we will never free you from our contract. Like, like I forget... Would... I, I forget who it was. I don't, there was one of these old internet blood sport guys that was fighting with some other random dude online, and the guy he was fighting with worked at an aquarium, and the, the this guy went to the aquarium and sort of like, talking to all oh of his the, uh, his uh, co-workers about the guy and like what he's doing online i'll have to pull up that story bro i love the was it like sometimes. ethan ralph or something it's sal- i it ethan ralph or ethan ralph adjacent i'm not sure if it was him it's it might have been the internet's awesome that's what yeah the, dude life ruination stuff is so funny like when you don't like a youtuber it's like i think it was the ethan klein and like in a Keemstar shit that started the whole like let's just contact the sponsor directly yeah. and like can get you removed and all that extra shit. The thing is, Ethan um, lost all of his sponsors right after that happened too. It, it goes both ways. The course. brands yeah. don't. It's not like a moral thing with these brands. The brands just don't want to deal with backlash. So if they get yeah. a bunch of angry emails, they'll drop you even if you're converting for them. Um, and they may bring you back at a later point, but they just don't need the negative press and they're super finicky. Yep, That's yep. why a lot of brands won't work with uh, YouTubers or are very particular with only wanting to work with a couple like really big names is because they don't want to just blanket sponsor a bunch of people because then if they're higher up at the company finds out that one of those YouTubers did something edgy or racist or something in their past, they get blamed and they'll probably get fired. So they'd rather just stick to throwing millions of dollars at regular TV ads on NBC and ABC because there's just no risk there. Whereas you sponsor a bunch of like middle class, you know, mid-sized YouTubers, uh, you know, there's too much risk to even bother giving them like a tied detergent spot. Yep. Well, cause it's like, what'll happen is like, even if they do something controversial, it's never going to hit the f- 
fucking mainstream cycle. You're usually fine there. It's just like if Logan Paul does something stupid, well, congratulations. Now your name is plastered on one of the biggest controversies of the year, right? Yeah, but I mean, all it takes is a couple emails. Um, yeah, I also, remember what's the even, only time... What's really scary about sponsoring YouTubers, though, is a YouTube video could get really viral. Like, you could have a guy with, you know, no subscribers, very small channel, and, and they'll make one video, and that video will get a million views. And uh, that can be scary if it's a controversial video. And they're not screening the content that they, they, they upload, they sponsor, for the most part. Well... For, for at least with YouTube, you need to have you know a thousand subscribers and what ten thousand hours of watch time to even qualify for monetization. But didn't YouTube do away with something where even if you're not monetizing something yourself, they're allowed to monetize it directly yeah. and just not split the revenue? Yeah, I, think uh, I don't think do you split the now. revenue. I think they just take all the revenue. They're allowed yeah, to monetize. Yeah, they don't split the revenue in those cases. Yeah, yeah so. they're just allowed to but monetize your video. all hours. <laughs> Very interesting. I don't know. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a wild thing with like YouTube and everything, and like how the, how, how this shit ends up going around. And it's just like the whole idea of life ruination. To get back to that subject, is like it's one of the biggest nuclear bombs that has existed on this platform too. Because like I feel like in most cases that it happens, it's just like a it's always down to that gross overreaction, and then it always like pushes that one creator who is like slightly controversial into like an even more up path you know because like once you've lost everything what's stopping you from being genuinely fucking like fucked well, up right th that's the thing it, it it brings you into either two routes either you get burned you know i dubs you know anthony fantano where they made slightly edgy stuff back in the day and then they just go fully clean um and they don't even Wait, discuss anthony the fantano controversial made stuff edgy stuff back in the day Anthony Fantano ran a like a meme review channel where he did like reactions to memes, and then somebody um, at one of these come at one of these publications made an article about it, like tying him to the alt right or something. And after that happened, he deleted his channel. Um, that channel, he deleted a podcast he had done with Sam Hyde, and uh, won't even discuss that stuff anymore. Oh. Um, Damn, he did shit with Sam Hyde. He did a podcast that. with Sam Hyde back in the day. Ooh. Did not know that. What and, then the he, and then Sam Hyde made a diss track about him, uh, like talking about like wanting to murder him. Oh my god, That's Sam Hyde. <laughs> I just don't even like care. Like Sam Hyde, like even despite all the stuff that he's done, it's like whatever. Like I wouldn't even feel like uncomfortable like doing something with him. You know, it's like whatever. It's just because you. One thing I've learned about on the internet is like once you like once somebody's already made an opinion of you, it's over. Like, it's over. Like, you're never going to convince them to be on your side. Yeah. So why why even bother pandering to that, you know, bullshit to begin with, right? And usually the way that people label other individuals on the internet is, like, so... It's such a blatant mischaracterization. Like, people already, like, think that just because I interact with, like, donut operator that I'm, like, f***ing... Like, they've already, like, deciphered 90% of my, like, f***ing political affiliations. And I'm like, dude, just because I talked to one other guy on the internet, you think that you've, like, labeled me? He's like, f*** you. Like, I'm still going to interact with these people. Like, people on the internet get this weird fixation about wanting to police a creator and their, like, contr and their, like contributions with other people, where it's just like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to shut up an emu with, with Cody a couple days ago. Wait, uh, what? Say it again? You cut out? I almost shot an, an emu. Yeah. You with a donut operator. <laughs> Very specific. Coda, Cody. What Holy. you're saying is it just, he's a, like... He's just a regular dude. He's yeah, that's, like, what I, that's exactly yeah. like any interaction I've had is like a normal guy. Like he's a normal, normal individual to me. It's like whatever. Like, like yeah, sure. People on Twitter say some wild shit or on the internet, but it's like it's not one hundred percent representative. What what is it that you shot an emu with him though? Like, were you go hunting with him? Uh, kind of, yeah, sort dude, of. Dude, I want to come with. Holy shit, emu hunting. <laughs> Damn. What makes it? Killing... What makes it kinda? It's either a yes or no question. What's what's yeah. the gray area? Hmm. <clears throat> It's only kind of if you did and fail to kill the uh, emu, then that just makes you. Know. It's even worse. <laughs> I'm not sure if I. I'm not even sure I was supposed to be there. To be honest. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wait. Wait. What do you? Want? Why? I, I. I'll explain it after the podcast. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. It's one of those. One of those. That's uh. That, that's that's. I swear to God, man, you have like the fucking wildest shit, wildest stories. Sometimes they're coming. You say some of the stuff that makes me wonder, dude. Like fucking just going hunting for the weirdest animal. That's what I'm saying. Like if you failed, that would just make you an Australian, you know? Damn. We did fail. I became an Australian. That's what I'm saying. It's like you failed. You 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 also lost the fucking emu war, dude. Mm-hmm. Oh, but goddamn. 
today was a fun, fun episode with the boys, ladies and gentlemen. But I actually, Caleb, I'm actually thankful you didn't have to go early to that meeting or something. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Um, they rescheduled to three, so I'm, I'm good for another hour. Let's go. Right. God damn. Well, today's been a great episode. I unfortunately do kind of have like a meeting to get to, sadly. But um, it's been a good, we, we've talked about a fair good amount of topics here. We've had a, we, had, we, we, co- we covered a lot of streamer bullshit that, you know, it feels like every, I would say, week, there's at least like 10 times the stories, more than anybody can normally cover. But where it ends, I hope not anytime soon, because goddamn, and it just means extra stuff to make fun of. too many people dead or in prison or injured or... Yeah. No, that's going to happen. <laughs> that, that, it's only going to get worse, okay? You thought, you thought one shooting in a food court was bad enough? Get ready for like four more next year, dude. 2024 is about to be a wild year for IRL streaming. Oh, goody. But, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to go check out Gamer from Mars, check him out for sure. He makes interesting weekly content. Weekly, right? I try. Right. Well, he tries to make you the weekly content. Oompaville makes some great daily content about the internet's greatest degenerates, as do I. And Nuxtaku covers degeneracy in the VTuber space. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike, dislike it. We are out. Thank you.